Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Azure Seas of Nita. I am their Heizmeister, and this is episode 17 of the Adventure Mode series. I'm here in the designer, and you're currently looking at uh, my Antares light air cruiser for no particular reason. Now then, first things first, let's address the obvious for now. Uh, yes, I have reached, or even surpassed, 3000 subscribers on this channel, which, uh, well, I like to thank you guys. It seems that you really like my content, and uh, that makes me very, very happy. Thank you. Um, yeah, normally I would do some kind of special, like for example a stream or something like that. But, um, to be fair, a carrier pigeon with a USB flash drive would be more efficient than my internet connection, so uh, that is unfortunately out of the question. For now. The next thing, um, I asked you for naming suggestions for the new discount uh, version of the Caledonia battleship that I spawned in in adventure mode, and uh, there have been a lot of interesting suggestions, and I have chosen one. Uh, what I've chosen exactly you will see once we enter the adventure mode. And the last thing I would like to address is, um, if you haven't seen it, Razul's wall of text that he left under the adventure video under the last part. Um, basically suggesting a, a restructuring of the fleet to better um, deal with the more difficult enemies. And that is something that I planned to do at some point, but um, he gave me a few pointers and uh, very, very informative hints, and it seems like I can no longer postpone this kind of procedure. And so I will, over the course of this and probably the next episode, change the fleet layout um, quite a bit. Which means we will also going to see some submarines deployed. Proper submarines, not just the fragment and the little drone submarine. Right then, enough of that. Let's get into the adventure mode. And there we are, back again on the all too familiar endless seas of need. There's something out there, Nita. Hello there, let me just change the fleet colors for a moment. I cannot proceed like this. Now these fleet colors are uh, not the ones I would like to use right now. Right then, and here we have the first naming suggestion uh, sent in by Kaiser Muffin, and he suggested I call the Caledonia uh, discount uh, the battleship Hannibal, and he said that plants can't go wrong with that name, and I tend to agree. So, here it is. Battleship Hannibal. Um, there was also another very, very uh, nice suggestion, and um, it was made by a viewer named K, and um, he said I should call it the Armstrong, uh, which I almost wanted to do, but I'm going to spawn in another ship at some point, and uh, yeah, I was so fond of that name that I will call this other ship the Armstrong. Right then, let's get down to business. There is more to be done here, way more. I need to readjust my air fleet now. Um, these two Aero Corvettes will be scrapped. So, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. While construction is still well underway, we have encountered a truly dangerous foe. This is the Sovereign, a um, Scarlet Dawn godly craft, if I'm not mistaken. A uh, broadsiding craft, and its most prominent feature is its uh, quad-barreled APS railgun here, very, very deadly, and uh, probably taking up a significant portion of the interior. And uh, yeah, this is it. Um, I've arrived at a higher difficulty, and this will be the true test of our fleet for now. Let's just increase 
the simulation speed here a bit. Um, one thing I would like to do as well is to uh, have the fleet move around the carrier from now on in fleet move only. Um, that way the carrier is better protected against the bombardment from um, yeah, foes such as this one. And um, the fleet can combine its defensive systems to better deal with missiles and the likes. Yeah, right away, going for the new Hannibal battleship. <laughs> uh, this is going to leave a mark. Okay. Uh, let me just... Ooh, I hate this. There we go. Oh, hello, missile. So, the Sovereign has smoked up a bit, probably being triggered by our uh, laser targeting system from the Aegis. Uh, speaking of laser targeting, by the way, I have retrofitted my uh, sniping drones, uh, sniper drones, um, to now be outfitted with uh, targeting lasers and uh, missile beam riders. They now make use of large missiles that have um, reinforced bodies and thumper heads. Um, not so much the uh, unguided combination I'm using right now. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've given um, laser-guided missiles uh, a try once again. I was quite hesitant to use those, uh, since, you know, smoke can very reliably disrupt the targeting of these. Oh, okay. Well, that was an explosion. Is the Sovereign down? Has this behemoth of Scarlet Dawn design been brought down? Yes, it has. Splashing down and dissolving into block confetti. Right, any more targets? What does my screen say? It says... Um, nothing. Yeah, this is my uh, enemy identification system. If I don't want to leave the safety relative safety of my little bunker here. Uh, this is finally functional. And right now I haven't detected anything. Hm, good to know. So I can now continue my retrofits. Oh, there she is. Rise. Fire support airship Aurora. Um, a front sider armed with a particle cannon and uh, two Ah, uh, what are they called again? Uh, APS guns? Yeah, that's it. And uh, this is also um, Razul's first airship that he ever built. Uh, we both modified it a bit, gave it a substantial overhaul, and now it is a very, very reliable and potent um, fire support unit. Uh, it is in the uh, light segment uh, when it comes to airships, you know, it's, it's nothing. Extremely special, but rather light. Well, you got hurt. Yeah, uh, Battleship Hannibal, everyone. It uh, took a little bit of damage. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll buff that one out, I think. You know, a little bit of polish, a new... Um, a new layer of paint and uh, no one will ever know that uh, this got quite damaged. Once again, the forces of Nita have um, come against us and what fearsome foe do we have here? Oh my, truly a terrifying opponent indeed. It is a Conestoga, <laughs> an Onyx Watch. Uh, resource hauler. Yeah, um... I am speechless. Is this some kind of Onyx Watch uh, strategy to confuse me and then strike me with a much more fearsome opponent? Because the Conestoga, yeah, is a, is a resource hauler. Not exactly a... Well, what do you expect at level... Uh, where am I? 90. I mean, I'll take what I can get. I am not complaining, mind you. So. 
Oh. Okay, let's leave the Conestoga to its fate and see if our... We have an aircraft detected? Why do we have an aircraft on the field? Hang on, the Conestoga is a ship. Yes, we should, shouldn't be detecting anything that is... Looks like I have to readjust my little uh, detection system there. And something else spawned in. There we go. Ha! I knew it! I knew it! It was all a ruse by the Onyx Watch. Of course it was. This is a stronghold. I have been bamboozled. Ah. They tricked me. Alright then, fleet. Um, come together around the adventure carrier, the melon seed. A battleship Hannibal, still under repairs, and uh, the serious aviation battleship, although it is due to, to be scrapped, um, still going strong. You never expect this from the best faction of Peter. Uh, okay, I'll be honest here, second best. The, I think the Great Talents, uh, at least for me, uh, they, they are my favorite faction. Right after the Onyx Watch, of course. Yeah. Uh, no, wait, the on is or is it the other way around? Anyway, great talents, best. Onyx Watch, second best. The stronghold, impressive cram armament. Um, you know, if if, if only those cram cannons were hyper optimized, that would be oh, truly impressive. Uh, well, then again, it has huge missiles. Yeah. Not a fan of uh, these, um, yeah, opinion amplifiers. Right, cram volley coming in. Hannibal battleship uh, still a little bit damaged. Can it defeat this cram volley? Yes, it can. It can indeed. Hmm. Where is the Aurora? She seems to be lagging behind a bit. Uh, I think she just dealt with... Yep, she dealt with the Conestoga. Okay then, get in there, get into the fight. Uh, fire support airship. Meanwhile, battleship Hannibal is weathering the storm all and on. Uh, intercepting cram barrages. Or not. Still, all this while being uh, moderately damaged. Although, due to the fire from the Crucible coming in from above, her heavy armor belt was actually kinda useless. Eh. But hey, you can't have it all. There we go. Now then, I said that I want to scrap the serious aviation battleship, and I will do so. Um, in due time, mind you, and um, for the serious aviation battleship, there will be another unit uh, coming in, which is a heavy cruiser. Though, if you'll see this unit, you might not think that it is a heavy cruiser. You might mistake it for a destroyer, but I can assure you, this is what I have designated a heavy cruiser. Uh, yeah, but more on this later. You'll see what I mean soon enough. Right then. It seems we have peeled away the stronghold's main armament. Uh, although, funnily enough, its missile firepower is higher than its cramp firepower. Yeah. Go figure, I guess. Hm. Impressive. Now, I need to have some more uh, heavy hitters in my fleet so that I can reliably take down something like the Crucible um, in less time than it took me before, because um, in that time it managed to do quite a lot of damage to the battleship Hannibal. Something I would like to avoid. Incoming! And where are you going to? Ah, nothing. Yeah, I'm going to pull this one in for repairs. Uh, at the melon seat. That's a torpedo hit. Yep. Looks like a, a nice chunk taking uh, taken out the armor there. Probably a huge uh, missile. 
or torpedo. And while I'm firing my own large torpedoes, these are heat torpedoes. Very nasty, these ones. Never expect them. Now, where's the Aurora? Where are you? You are here! Yeah, you're a little bit on the slow side. Um, but hey, it's, it's doing the best it can. Looks like my plan is working. With the carrier set to combat mode, the fleet is now much closer together and with the carrier engaging as well, we have now the combined firepower of the fleet hammering down on the stronghold. And it looks like the Aurora has finally reached her um, desired combat distance and is firing away with missiles, particle cannons and APS cannons as well. They should be semi-armor-piercing uh, semi APS shells, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Nice fire support airship. Granted, not the most strongest unit, but a solid and reliable one. And um, that's all I want, honestly. Okay. Yeah, the stronghold is toast. <laughs> I thought for one second the Onyx Watch had me there with the Conestoga, but no. No, 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 no. I won't let myself get fooled a second time. Next time I see a Conestoga, I know what's coming from me. Ah, see? I learned from uh, these battles. And here it is! The finished ship that I said would look like a destroyer. <laughs> and it's actually a heavy cruiser. Yes, this is my heavy cruiser Orion. Um, it's actually, it, I mean, it was a test bed for various weapon systems. Uh, I wanted to see how they work in combat, so I whipped up this little ship here. Um, but there's uh, an unfortunate circumstance surrounding this little ship here. It's not on my team. Nope, this one just spawned. I. There's. Um, it's quite a problem, actually. Uh, let me show you something. I'm still constructing my version of the Orion Cruiser, which uh, apparently plowed right through the Caesar Destroyer while it was under construction. Wonky physics happened, and every single sub-object sub of the Caesar Destroyer here, at least the ones that were below the waterline, were destroyed. Alongside with some stuff in the AI room, and probably the magazine as well. Yep, it blew up. <sighs> Isn't FTD a wonderfully stable game? <laughs> nah, just kidding. Okay. Aegis. Just, you know, the fleet, um, fleet movement points, apparently they, they do not uh, change depending on the position of the flagship. So they are not relative to the flagship, which is uh, not exactly optimal. I'm not. I'm not happy about this. But hey, there we go. Let's see how we fare against this version of the Orion. Um, although designated as a heavy cruiser, its armor is not exactly uh, heavy, uh, mind you. You know, it's, it's it's very slim, and its armament consists of. Um, Rail-assisted Sabo guns, you know, the APS guns you can see, a missile silo, some secondaries, a laser that can target um, uh, suicide craft and aircraft as well as missiles, and uh, a Cebus. No torpedoes on this one. Oh yeah, and then there's the uh, synchronized quadruple anti-aircraft cannon. But as you can see now, against the firepower of the fleet, it is absolutely helpless. Um, as most of my ships are. They are not meant to operate alone. Um, many of my units are actually designed to work in tandem with others, support each other, um, compensate for each other's weaknesses, and emphasize each other's strengths. 
Oh, hey, it looks like the lamps are still working. Yeah. Nice little ship. Though it still has the old bridge layout I used quite some time ago. Oh. Oh, yeah, there we see aircraft receiving the nasty sting of the uh, Orion's laser system. Missiles, of course, being uh, thrown off their trajectory or thrown off course by decoys. Just as I wanted it to be. And the nice thing about this turret layout here is that this uh, rear turret can turn almost all the way to the front. Granted, there's a little bit of uh, uh, angle there still left, but it gives it a, a very nice versatility. And still not dead yet. Oh, look at that. However, here are the sniper drones with their beam rider missiles. Will they hit? Yes, they will. Much better than those one turn guided ones. Or should I say unguided since uh, they will. Yeah, one turn is not exactly reliable. Um, beam riders, much better. And they don't require a complicated setup. Uh, just. Um, yeah, in the circumstance that the enemy has smoke, they, well, okay, they maybe get thrown off, of course, but hey, beam rudder missiles, they do work, sometimes. I wonder if they will f still follow this um, obscured laser beam there, as you can see here when it changes to the yellow, the laser beam has been obscured by smoke. It doesn't matter if it's your own smoke or the enemy smoke just deployers. Missiles incoming! Totally missed! Hang on a second. I did notice there was another vehicle on the field. Another foe to vanquish. This one is a white flare design. It is the Scourge. It may not look like much and uh, even its material cost is fairly reasonable. However, these two cannons here fire an annoying swarm of tiny, tiny sabo needles. There they are, and they are deceptively deadly. Um, combined with the armor penetration of these things and the rate of fire that the Scourge can deploy, um, yeah, they hurt if you are not equipped with strong shields, that is. And uh, in between this heavily damaged Orion heavy cruiser. Continue. Now our... There they are, the sniper drones, using state-of-the-art laser-guided munitions, have selected the Scourge, or maybe not. Not the Orion, apparently. Why haven't they selected the Scourge as their primary target? I wonder... Engaging now. You know what? Make this one disappear. There we go, release your missiles. Missiles released. Traveling along the path of this laser beam and... Well, two missed and two have done... Quite some damage, actually. Yeah, they are uh, short missiles, um, but they they do uh, they do their damage. I'm I'm happy with how they turn out. Now, at some point, I do want to construct a drone carrier, a, a special type of drone carrier that basically um, adapts to the situation of the battlefield and builds its drones according to the enemies it has to face. Uh, so, for example, if there's a submerged enemy or a ship present, then it will build um, drones that are suited against those, like my pack bomber drone or a torpedo bomber drone or something like that. You know, an adaptable drone carrier. Yeah, that's probably what I would like to call it. This will probably require a lot of ACBs to set up, and um, assuming that the carrier has enough resources, 
this concept may work out. Well, we will see in the future. Right. Has everything been defeated? No, of co- Okay, it has. Yep, there we go. The Orion just smoked up heavily. Um, I have spared no expenses when it comes to the laser defense on this little cruiser. Uh, it has a lot of smoke deployers. Goodbye. Poof. Okay then, the Aquila has been designated as the priority target. There we go. And I'm um, still having camera issues. Okay. Yeah, this camera issue needs to be fixed. That free cam should be freely available. Uh, not through any shenanigans with um, the follow camera or close up camera. Anyway, looks like the Aquila has now the is now the center of attention of our fleet here and receiving a lot of fire. You can see EMP surges all around, probably most of them coming from the Medusa and the secondaries of my fleet, which I have switched to EMP for now. Uh, yeah, that's it. Take out those rail guns. They can do nasty damage against the relatively lightly armored decks of my ships. So, very nice looking airship though, from the Great Talents. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I really like the twin hole design, with a vertically stacked hole instead of a horizontally one. Of course, this um, does uh, mean that this design is a little bit unstable around its roll axis, but hey, that's just what you have to put to up with if you choose such a design. Okay, did we get it? It seems we have disabled some of its weapons. Uh, looks like our missiles are failing to catch up with the Aquila. That's a shame. That's quite a shame. And where's our own Orion? It's back there in the distance. Actually, it's more more suited for um, a kind of role where it can uh, engage heavily armored targets with its uh, rail guns and um, defend against uh, little flyers and little ships that come too close. It's, once again, a versatile uh, ship not built for any specific purpose. Oh, here comes the Seavis and, uh, yep, the laser as well. Oh, I say Seavis, but it's a combined Seavis and anti-aircraft system. Uh, yep, there it is, the synchronized Anti-aircraft gun is engaging as well. Impressive. Haha, <laughs> the Aquila is making us fly by. <laughs> Probably focusing on our battleship uh, Hannibal for the moment. Since it's due to its size and uh, weaponry, it does seem to be at the center of attention a lot of times. Ooh, that looked painful. I can see that maybe the Aquila is. Uh, slowing down or even losing altitude. I can't quite see it right now. Yeah, she's, uh, she's surviving. The Aquila is still airborne, not out of the fight just yet. And yeah, I know. A little anti-aircraft pop guns here don't really do anything against a heavily armored opponent like this, because um, this one is also generously clad in heavy armor. Yeah. There is that instability I was talking about. The Aquila is now leaning quite heavily to one side. It seems we have done uh, some damage to one side only and its um, uneven weight is now becoming a problem for this ship. Oh, there we go. Remove the gun. That's nice. Uh, 
know, she's... well, it's, it's, it's still up there. Still flying, still fighting. Though receiving a nasty hit from the Madden 6 Particle Cannon. Ha ha ha! What a fight. This is what I want to see. An opponent that can hold out against this fleet. Um. And uh, I might add, this is mainly due to the sturdiness of the Aquila, as well as the lacking firepower of my fleet, maybe. Confetti! Oh, is that it? Looks like we have landed a... A nasty hit there. Yeah, I've changed the Hannibal back to uh, AP Frag, and I think now all the shells have cycled through from EMP to Frag, and uh, yeah, there we go. Armors and component being sheared off and totally shredded apart by the uh, concentrated bombardment of our newest battleship, the Hannibal. Well, it's a bit large to. Uh, go over the Alps, but uh, it's a conquer run nonetheless. Although, you know, Hannibal didn't conquer Rome. <clears throat> yeah. Goodbye, Aquila. You were a worthy foe, and combat against you brought me a lot of joy. This is how a unit should be. And where are we in terms of... Uh, oh. What's going on right there? Let me just have a look real quick. Right. The skies are clear. The seas are calm. It is time to end the episode. I hope you have enjoyed this rather hectic adventure today on the endless seas of Nita. Um... I am the Heizmeister. I will now delete one ship from the fleet, as we, has, as we have uh, replaced it with a much more modern Orion cruiser. And uh, I hope I see you next time on the Endless Seas of Nita, when we will make another addition to our fleet. An addition that was long overdue. Until then, I am the Heizmeister. Take care and goodbye.